Matt, I, I appreciate you. You know, when I asked you to do this, uh, I, I'm not good at getting it up, as you know, and I'm barely good at doing everything in the middle, and mm-hmm. I'm horrible at doing it, getting it down. And so, I with, with the fight that me and Jason are in the middle of, I, I, I really appreciate you. You know, taking the reins and being my co-pilot. It's an honor. I, I you I, know, and I thought who better because you have actually flown this thing, so. Like, you know some of the gauges and stuff. Some of the ins and outs of the yeah. plane, sure, so. in order to, you know, supplement. Yeah, I know you and Jason have gone through a rough stretch here, sure. and, you know, that might be distracting uh, to anyone trying to get it up or get it back down. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I thought that was. Oh. Uh. Oh. Hey, Matt. I'm glad you... Oh, great. Jay? What the hell is this? Um, I asked. He got Ma- mad here now. He stole Matt from me. I asked Matt to do the show with me. I asked I Matt to do the show with me. But I didn't know you were doing. You, you know, you just come and go, and I don't hear from you, and you don't answer texts or tweets or anything. I've been very busy putting on a quality program. I don't know if you heard last week's episode. It was great. It was great. I'm not gonna. I'm, I mean, I'm man enough to say it was great. But when you have right. Hoover, how can it not be great? All right, your episode is pretty good too, I guess. But uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to do an episode here today. Matt, I don't know why you agreed, both of us, it's like an 80s sitcom. Well, let me, let me interject here while, while temperatures are high, and may, maybe I can try to cool things well, off. You got, for... you got about 10 seconds, because I want to get the hell out of here. Well, I, I, want, I would like to disclose that both of you separately, and remind both of you separately, that you, you asked me to uh, be here and to uh, take the opportunity maybe to mediate this dispute. Um, Can't do it. And, and I'll remind, Jay, this is a conversation. Ours is dated. Uh, Blake's and mine is much more recent. But here I am. I th- you know, this, Thank what you, is ma'am. What is this podcast without the two of you? And uh, there's an opportunity here to pass the peace pipe, but I don't think it's going to happen without a neutral third party. Do we have to get high? Um, I can't get high and fly. I don't know how to mediate without getting high. <laughs> yeah, well, makes sense. usually I take it up. And I do everything in the middle. And then I, at the end, I bring it back down. So, but it doesn't. It, that doesn't. Just because we have a great uh, uh, melting pot of talent between the two of us, and we put on a great show, doesn't mean I, I mean I have to put up with his bullshit. And doesn't mean I have to. Uh, he, what he said. Well, let me start with this. I, I usually I usually applaud both parties. Um, oh, thank you for 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 being willing to come to the table. Sure. That's really nice. Thank especially you. especially during. But I'm not sure that 100% applies here because I feel like um, there was a, a little bit of, what's the word, wamboozling to get you both into the same place at the same time. So we are getting high. <laughs> I'll have a wambo- I'll get You know what? Make mine a double. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying, Matt. I'm probably 75% right. And he's probably 25% right. And I understand that. And yeah. as soon as he can accept that, then we can move along. Well, let's, let's revisit that because I, I, don't want, I don't want to score and I don't want to label anything just yet. But I, I, can, we, I, can we rate it, though? Can we four score? We can. Um, Only seven years ago. <laughs> we're going to rate this mediation at the end. Oh, okay. On a scale of one to seven based on the fame show Wings. Okay, I'm familiar right. with that scale. Just so that your audience has, you know, some some place to work. And, and speaking of your audience, mm-hmm. this is for them. Let's keep that in mind. The common denominator here is what is this podcast? Unless both of both of you are here and and willing to be part of it and willing to work with each other. Yeah, those twelve uh, those twelve people are. Uh, it's a serious thing. For imagine them. like they do. Let's count go on ahead. Us. Let's spend like ninety seconds supposing what would become of their lives if you two don't reconcile here tonight. Well, I think if I may go first. Um, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, right? Does it make a noise? So I guess if Blake and I don't put on a show, do the people who listen to the show even really exist? Blake, what would, how would you respond to that? Um, I can see Armageddon if we don't do it, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Right. I mean, uh, you know, 12 people can make up a riot and, you know, 12 people turns into 30 people in a riot and then there's 70 right. people. Yep. And next thing you know... Russia's taking us over. Mm-hmm. Anyone specifically you think is hanging on by a thread that if this was removed from their life, that... Adam Z. Adam Z, Adam Z. for sure. Adam Z for sure. You're barely F- hanging fall on. Fall apart. You should yeah. see the text he sends me. What I mean, they, 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 what's that? What do they say? That, that's exactly right. You can't even read them. You're right. He seems positive, but yeah. the spelling is uh, atrocious. And, and you, can, you can tell that he's like, obviously has like, some unstableness and like out, even, of, out of a touch with reality because he's telling everybody he has a girlfriend. He's, yeah, he's fabricated an entire being. It's uh, I would say I would say Adam Z easily. Very well. Then this one's for Adam Z. All right. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. If, he, if that's what he needs, 
I guess I can do one more show with you, Blake. Have Have either of you ever been through professional remediation? <laughs> On multiple occasions. Remediation. I don't know. What the, I, I will say yes. You have... <laughs> Very good. Well, I'm going to lay out some some terms. I'm going to lay out some conditions. Well, I've already kind of like gave him a soft agreement. To well, but he's also said, he, he, all you said was uh, I, I can do one more episode. Well, that that goes to yeah. exactly against what Matt was just yeah, talking. We're about. looking for a long term solution. To the media. Well, I don't want Adam Z to hang on that long. <laughs> he's been hanging on for so long. All right. All um, right. What do you got for us? First so, of all, but before I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's very hard to take you seriously with a visor on. It really is. That's what I was hoping for. And at the same time, I would like to remind that here we all are with this opportunity right. to find a solution, to suspend the conflict, and to find a way back to, be, to, to coexisting, if not enjoying each other's company. So a couple terms and conditions. I'm going to give you both an opportunity in a moment to have the air to yourself 90 seconds to explain your side. For remediation, right? For remediation. Right, I think that's what that's the class I went to for behavior kids. I went to remediation. Class. Did remediation? Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Uh, I remember going to a counselor and uh, he had a sandbox in his uh, office and spent a lot of time at that sandbox. No mercy. All right, lay it on us. So the first thing we're going to do is give you both an opportunity to explain your side of it. The other person will not interject. If anybody interjects, it'll be me to help us steer us back on course. But 90 seconds to explain your side of the grievance and what you hope to get from it. I this. like that. You said steer us back on course. It's kind of like an aviation thing. Yep. Yeah, I like yep. that. Yeah. In our terms. Uh, should, I, should I play jazz music for those 90 seconds? Oh, I'd love that. All right. Key us up. Who's up first? Jason, I'm going to have you go first. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I guess what it comes down to, Blake, is that uh, when I didn't get an invite... To our Phoenix Online school reunion in Las Vegas at the Luxor, I was really hurt, and um, I see now, you know, I, I made some I made some bad choices in the past, and they, they resulted in me not getting that invite, and I should not have shown up, and I should not have shown up intoxicated, and I shouldn't have uh, pantsed that guard in the Luxor jail, and um, then I came back here with a bad attitude. Um, I guess uh, I guess I owe you and maybe Adam Z an apology. That was remarkable. Usually those end on a much more sour note, more more kind of a, a, more a, a dig. A note like this. Wait for it. That's my part. No, usually they they they're much more accusatory. So, Blake, let me give the floor to you. 90 seconds here, your side of the grievance, and... Can I get, can I, can I get a special announcement music? I'm, it's kind of like more my speed. You want the special announcement oh, music? Yeah. yeah. Go, go right ahead. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Should I start now? It's kind of intense, but go ahead. Yeah. Jason, I know, uh, you know you've been my friend for a long time. Uh, you're a, a better person than me, uh-huh. uh, yep. and, and you tell me that all the time. You talk about how, you know, I'm, I'm not as funny as you, not as creative as you, and you know, for once, I had the spotlight at uh, Phoenix Online, you know, class reunion, and you you had to steal it from me. But I'm okay with that because you're my friend, and I, I care a lot about you, and. Um, you know, got people screw up. I mean, I've screwed up once or twice in my life. And, you know, this is just one of your largest ones. And you know, I'm good enough to be your friend that I can look past it. I think you chose the right music for that. Thank you. Uh, okay, this next portion of the remediation is where um, I share. Uh, and, and I would have gotten both of yours agreement, but I didn't think I could get you into the same room at the same time until here we are. So uh, I'd like to share with the listening audience that we did have private caucuses that were held um, with Whoa. each hey, party. Hey, nobody's touching nothing of mine in private. I oh, found that out. Yeah. Where you both shared with me privately, sure. um, and I was hoping it would come out in in, <laughs> in 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 what you both just shared a moment ago. 
Um, yeah, but I, it, I think I did a good job. I mean, I think you, I think you, you did. You, you really talked about how well he did, and then you just kind of said, "Well, yeah, yeah he's done." And I'm I was really be... thrown off by the intensity <laughs> of the music. <laughs> That's his bugaboo: is when people don't praise him as That's... equally to others around him. Well, That's... and since we're uncovering this, I just for just um, I wanted to uncover that and okay. have have Blake see that for himself. Blake, how would you respond to that? About, about my bugaboo? Yeah. How, how's your bugaboo? I would say I have lots of bugaboo problems. Well, I have a high end bugaboo in Here's what you both shared with me privately. Do you need hey. any music? Um, well, hit me with something. Hold on a second. Where's that one? King uh, of the Ring? No, I'm trying to find. Uh, oh, there it is. Welcome to Mad Libs. Some things are some things are hard to say. Some things are hard to hear. This is both. So, Blake, I'm going to share yours first. Um, you shared that <clears throat> you don't feel like you're enough for Jason. Week to week, uh, the guests feel like a crutch to lean on, uh, and that in doing so and having all these guests on. That, uh, Jason, that you don't respect his wit, his charm, uh, his words, stunning looks, and talent. Okay? Sounds accurate. Um, now, Blake, this was from Jason, what he shared with me privately. And again, I want to get to the root of all this, because I feel like we are talking about a symptom with this Phoenix Online. Sure. Right? I want to get down to the... Okay. Uh, Jason, uh, yours was a, a little bit... Uh, more straightforward. You feel like Blake had really let himself go. Physically. He was unkempt, and uh, the wheezing had gotten out of control. All physical. Um, and you felt like much of it stemmed from his time spent at the, at the Moose Lodge. All physical stuff. Almost all physical. And I'd like to give you both uh, another round of 90 seconds here to respond to what I believe truly are the real, uh, the roots of the, the problem. Blake, why don't, why don't you go ahead and go first here? All right. Uh, I guess I would just say I don't need 90 seconds. Uh, maybe I feel, maybe feeling a little inferior is probably a little true. Um, I feel like the moose is, has been a positive part of my life that Jason has just refused to like get a membership and like spend more time with me. Isn't that what we're talking about here? We're pretty close to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how, how would you respond to Jason, though, him thinking that you, you've really let yourself go? Um, I don't. I think I've, I've, I've actually kind of picked it up a notch, but uh, maybe on Mondays when I'm just kind of being lazy and just kind of kicking back, maybe mm -hmm. he doesn't see that. Mm -hmm. But like, if he spent more time with me besides on Mondays, maybe he'd see the other times where I look pretty. You smell like dog vomit. And Jason, how, how would you respond? I, I mean, um, he smells like dog vomit. <laughs> to um, him feeling like the guests are a crutch. Um, yeah, he's right. <laughs> but yeah. what, he, what he's saying to me when he has guests on week after week after week mm -hmm. is your creativity is not worth, I, you know, it's not helping me. I can't carry this myself. Mm -hmm. I'll get somebody else to bounce off of. Jay, how would you respond? You know, I don't think it's um, it's Jimmy Fallon and that uh, announcer every night. You know, that's not those two guys week after week talking to each other. You got to throw someone else in the mix. So um, I like the phone calls. I like the uh, the guests. If you don't like that stuff, we can change it, I guess. But um, I'm just trying to keep it interesting. 200 episodes is a lot of episodes. Mm. It's a lot of episodes. I, I think what he's saying, you know, if I if I may, please. I, I feel like what he's saying. He's is that he's really tired of doing this, to be honest with you. Like, this has become taxing and not fun. Ooh. Ow. You have to hit me. Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to keep things interesting for us and for the listeners so they don't get the same thing every week. And this, is really, this, is, this is so therapeutic. You both have really taken an opportunity here to share what was beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to do now, before we move on with the rest of the show, is... Um, Finally, my proposal, and this proposal... I do. 
I this proposal, say, I'm not saying that again. I am going to recommend, and I'm going to need verbal agreement here, is binding. Whatever I suggest here, that you will both agree to the terms. Okay, so when you tell us those, then at the end of that, we can say yes or no. So you have an opportunity right now to say, no, I don't agree to whatever it is that you're going to suggest. So we have to agree to something we don't know what's going to be? That's how this works. Yikes. I, I, know, I know Blake's going to agree because he's on the binding stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I love a good notebook. I love a good hardback. That's not what I meant. I'm not going to let him upstage me, so I'll agree to it, too. Well, I feel like this is healthy. So let's go ahead and proceed. Uh, my proposal, after hearing both sides, talking uh, in our private caucuses as well as here, just together. Strike two, buddy. <laughs> How can you not laugh with somebody says um, caucuses? You both have submitted to the terms of this proposal. Jason, um, you'll agree to a moratorium of six weeks, no guess. Just uh, the Just the two of you. No. That's going to run into our 200th you, episode. Oh, that's true. Is that um, something you'd like to negotiate, Blake? W- would you be willing to negotiate yeah, would, on the two hundred like episode? I was hoping to get like twenty we, guests. We, we, had, we had made a verbal agreement. Very well. You know, we had touched penises, uh, and so the two hundredth episode, we can have a bunch of people. So. See what that was right there was a classic overshare. And so that's not good. That's what I'm known for. That's like my my shtick. Okay. I kind of like it. <laughs> you both are made for each other. Please. Here, so so here. so the uh, next six. Not including the 200. Not included. Would yep. you be willing to agree to that? I will, I will agree to that. Very good. And, and Blake? <clears throat> You're I, I, going I to... I just ag- agreed to something. That's Is, right. It's my turn again? I have to agree to something else? Kind of. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Um, you're going to agree to a, a healthier lifestyle um, for the same time period. Six weeks, uh, excluding the 200th episode. <laughs> just let yourself go. Um, you'll agree to see a doctor for what Jay called that growth. I don't know what that is. I, I can't even... Well, begin. I think that's why you asked. I think... Right. I can't even begin to imagine... Wh- I mean, like, I see it protruding from the shirt, but it doesn't look like anything I've ever... Like, I've, like you're not smuggling anything. That's coming out of you. It's a shape that's coming out of you, and I don't understand what it is. Well, I, I have some belongings that I have to carry with me at all times. Yeah, right. You have to drain that. I think we, I think we'd all feel better if you if you had it looked at. If you drained it, um, and you'll finally you'll agree to uh, fifteen push-ups a day. Well, not those lady ones either. You got to yeah. have your back. Knee, knees off those. the ground. Knees off the ground. Mm-hmm. For how many? For how many days? Uh, the the six weeks. Every day for six weeks. I'm afraid so. Fine, I, you know I I think I look good right now, but maybe I'll, it'll make me look better. And you know, um, why hasn't he had to agree to anything though? I well, just, he, he I, no, I, I, no, I, I agree that you have to do the push-ups. I, this really seems like I have six, to agree. to Six it. weeks, no guess. And I had to do two things. He should have to do another. He have to, should agree to another. Well, you, okay. Was the two hundredth episode? Do you feel like that is a concession for you of no guess, or is that something? I you mean, I'll probably have some some beers and <laughs> probably make some popcorn. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Three Musketeer bar. I haven't had one in a while. Hot dog. I just had two. <laughs> I had two yesterday. With the with the stewardess being gone, I have That's no leukemia city. I have no way to. Well, given eat. how easily you were distracted away from your point, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and stick with the six weeks no guess. Are we are we fine then? Are we doing? Sure. Uh, you want to do an episode? Sure, let's try. We'll we'll see how it goes. Oh man. She used to be an actress. Oh really? Yeah. Thanks she a lot, Matt. <laughs> and I think a biggest just doing deal my part. Was she starred in a pilot. I I look at it, by the end, I'll have you know fucking the ripped, on TV? ripped abs and muscles. And yeah. You think the abs are in your arms? You said do push-ups. Are your arms, are your abs in your chest show. and arms? It tightens up yeah. your, you well, up your abs when you shows, do push-ups. They make one show. Yeah, we'll and your, see. your biceps, your and triceps. And they show that one show to the people who pick shows. fucking ripped. Your glutes. They decide if they want to make more shows. Some get chosen and become You won't talk shit about me anymore. Some don't. I'll get up in your face. I'm nothing. She started in one of the ones that became nothing. Another go- negotiation. Ah, welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past, 
My name is Jason, but you can call me Joni, and across from me is my muscle gym. It's Captain Philip Prestisher. I thought you'd call me Chachi. No, because the show's called uh, Let's Join Joni. Yeah, Joni and Chachi. Top of the show, Let's Join Joni is the worst title we've ever had for any one of our pilots. It does not roll off the tongue. It is a nightmare. It, it, it's rough. Whenever you have an apostrophe... <laughs> see, I, I'm, Matt, I'm trying to talk. Okay, sorry. Um... I feel as though when you have an apostrophe in the title of a show, yes, it it, it, it distracts. So I agree. Yeah, I, something I, like that is very distracting. I, I concur. You concur? Okay. Um, well, I, I mean, let's let's address the elephant in the room, or undress the elephant in the room, whatever you... We did the last two episodes apart. Yeah. And before the show today, we had a little meeting with our guest today. Sure. We, 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 let's just say we had a separation. Mm-hmm. We, and, I, and you know what? I had separation anxiety. Really? You throw up everywhere? Yeah. I went around the captain's lounge and I threw up no less than nine times. <laughs> That's what uh, DSJ was like. You know, like he just kept raising his hands, like, like, Whoa, what's going he on? He ran out of sawdust, is what it was. Oh, yeah. Remember how the years, kid, years this, he's been collecting that sawdust well, and he used it all on my own vomit. Right. And I was like, Well, there's three, there's three vomit kits in the plane. He yeah. used those, and mm-hmm. it's, and then, you know, those are like $175 a piece. We are not equipped to, uh, to clean up any more vomit. No. We're, so we're at puke max from right now, now on. If anybody comes on our plane and throws up, they're paying for it or they're cleaning it. Hey, you know what? Bring your own plastic puke bag, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. So I think we, we're um, we're in a place where you and I can move forward amicably. Sure. Sure. And um, I think we'll do so. We'll try to respect each other's feelings. And you're going to do some push-ups. Yeah, and you have to do absolutely nothing except not have guests. Well, so. I, th- I think part of it is I'm going to watch you do the push-ups. <laughs> oh, I bet you'll love that. Yeah, I will. What do you want me to wear? <laughs> you know what I want you to wear. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, we're going to have, um, we got a guest like we had mentioned up top here. It's one of our most frequent guests. In a, in a, in a, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but an actual, um, a, a, he has, he's a counselor by degree. Sure. Did you know that? No. Yeah. I, I, he, I thought he was he has just a counseling degree. in logistics and inventory and all that good stuff. That's what he does by day. But by night, he's a counselor. Really? Yeah, he moonlights as a, as a counselor. Now I'm even more afraid to be around him. Oh boy, Matt! As you know, welcome I, I, to the show, Matt. Welcome, welcome to the show, Matt. Glad to be here. Uh, I, I've always been afraid to be around you. I, it's one of those things like, like I want to see the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. but I, I, I want to see it so bad, and I want to spend time with the Grand Canyon, but I don't want to get there and somebody to force me to walk out on that glass overhang, yeah, and and ex- experience the whole thing. And that's kind of the way I feel when you're here. Like, like I want to see you. I want to see the Grand Canyon. I mm-hmm. want to like w- watch the donkeys going down the bottom and stuff. But I'm no. I don't want to be pushed onto that class overhang because then I'm, I'm embarrassed by how I cry and stuff. <laughs> this I, is the I, first I, time I've been compared to the Grand Canyon or donkeys walking down it. I've dated a few girls that have been compared to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I was um, going to say I've dated a few girls that compared to donkeys. No, that's a terrible thing to say. Um, no, first of all, I don't think anyone's going to push you out. I understand your metaphor, but no one's going to push you out onto a, a glass platform. Well, what I mean push is like metaphorically. Mm-hmm. Like they'll use verbal oh, they'll insults taunt and taunts and bullying and be like, oh, you're not you're not a real man if you don't go out there. You're not a real boy. Matt, Matt have you been to the Grand Canyon? Not the one he's describing. No. <laughs> you haven't been to the Grand Canyon ripe with glass platforms? <laughs> and donkeys. This one <laughs> asses as far as the eye can see. <laughs> you never been to the Grand? I thought for sure you you'd have been to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I I have not spent much time in that state, no sir. What state is it in? Nevada. Oh yeah, yeah. Nevada, the, the Colorado really? River, right? Yeah. Is it in Nevada? I think it price is it only in Nevada? Or I think it, it the span? part that's well, I think the part that's most popularly visited is in Nevada, and that is the Colorado River that runs through it. Correct. I'm gonna go with yes on that. Okay, that'll be fine. Uh, if one of our fans could fact check that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. As always, al- as always. It's, always to have, it's always good to have a bull in the chamber. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> have you been to the top of the Willis to Tower? Thin out those donkeys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we got we to gotta thin out that population. Too much asses. Yeah. <laughs> Too much ass. Have you guys been to the top of the Willis Tower, Sears Tower? Sure. When got, it was a Sears. And yeah. they got the glass boxes. Have you been yeah. out in the glass box? I, w- I put one foot out there. Yeah, and Molly like shamed me like I was not a real man. But then you know, come two years later, oh, it shattered. 
oh, well, maybe I saved myself. From that, that could have been me. That could have been me. After, well, you, after you do those push-ups, though, and you put on that muscle weight, yeah. I wouldn't go out there. You hear a crack, you better <laughs> yeah. jump back. I would quick. get back in. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. if I hear a crack, obviously my mother's back's broke. <laughs> he's a bowler now, so he's very he adheres very much to uh, superstition. Sure. <laughs> uh, you had mentioned uh, you had mentioned Molly earlier. She's gone right now, so you're home alone. Like risk, risk, risky business style. He's probably like running around oh, here in his well, underwear. Yeah, that was the yeah. plan. the The original plan was straight up risky business style, like walking around here with just my underwear, if yeah. that at all. Uh, you know, just like have the TV up as loud as I wanted. Well, the to. dogs have all their stuff out. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. That put a big damper on my whole like what I was going to do. She went out of town, and you have to babysit dogs, and you're not going to uh, run around in your underwear, right? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. I, what would you do if if your wife went out of town? Would you run around in your underwear? I think I feel like I do a healthy amount of that, even when she's in town. Here's a weird question: If she was out of town, would you run around in her underwear? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like an FBI director. <laughs> yeah. Which one was that? Um, oh, I don't remember. No, oh, I don't recall I, either. I don't remember which one. I knew he was talking about, but I can't. Yeah, like. I keep wanting to say Gerald Ford. I know that's not it. Um, boy, I, that's that's weird. Okay. Yeah. So, so what would I'd you do? Ru- well, I would, <laughs> I would act like my uh, home was the FBI bureau, and I'd run around in my underwear. It's nice, um, right? Yeah. That's and how you, I live my life. My entire life is lived like that way. How, how many, care, how many push-ups do you do a day? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, how often do you do? Push-ups? I did a few on your doorstep, and then once I got inside, <laughs> can I do the can I do the, the, the angled ones and not just the straight flat ones? Matt loves to do um, push ups on either side of thresholds. That's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> on his wedding night, he's like, I, oh, no, wait a minute, dear. If I cross over a threshold, I have to do yeah. it. push ups on either side. He honors that threshold. I honor by the push ups. At the first of the month, <laughs> do you? It's uh, how I honor the new space I'm entering, <laughs> and the one I'm leaving. At the first of the every month, do you spin around three times and say "rabbit's foot, rabbit's foot, rabbit's foot"? I, I haven't done it yet. I don't know what <laughs> is that from. <laughs> that Beetlejuice? Supposedly, no, the first the, fir- the first day of every month, you're supposed to go in cir- circles and say "rabbit's foot, rabbit's foot." I now, did accidentally summon Beetlejuice once. <laughs> uh, How about the Candy Man? Have you ever heard of that? What he just said about the rabbit's foot? Mm-mm. He said you're supposed to do that. Obviously, you're not supposed to do it because no one's ever heard of that. <laughs> it's... What, it, Okay. What is it supposed to do? Give I'm, you good luck? Yeah, it's supposed to make that month you're going to have good luck. Have you done it before? Yeah. How's your luck? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got friends that care about me and are my other friends, yeah. and uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm the luckiest guy in the world right now. Okay. Well, there you go. The, you know what? I'm going to start doing that thing he said. <laughs> he doesn't care for that. Oh my boy. All right. Well, you're back on the show. That's fantastic. You you brought Blake and I back together from our uh, temporary separation. Easier said than done. You mm-hmm. are um, a saint. He's a saint. A, by far, our most frequent guest, I mm-hmm. would say. Saint Matthew. That's fine. That's a real church, I think, locally too. Oh, really? Um, you own a church? The Grand Canyon and the church all in one day. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Push ups on either side of a threshold. <laughs> How do you get anything else done? Yeah. I, re- I really don't. <laughs> it's not. It's not hard to say how he fills his day up. Um, do we have any fan feedback, per chance? No. You're not even checking, are you? Well, no, because we—I we, I don't think we—we we haven't had any contact. The, the the listenership has dropped off dramatically. Tremendously. Well, and that's that, and the. Um, that was some of the concern. I think that's. Yeah. It, there's probably a pretty straight line to draw between that and and the dispute. I think that's been happening for months, actually. It's really uh, leveled Blake emotionally. Yeah, I don't have any. All right, that's fine. Oh wait, no wait, yeah. Well, we did. We had uh, Chris Tuckley. I do take it back. Okay. Chris Tuckley contacted us, um, and he sent us a picture of him uh, revisiting the site of Robert Bald- Baldick's adventure in honoring of couch pilots. He was at the Honmore Abbey. It was in that movie. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, so he, he took a picture of him outside did it. Did he then, really? And then had a Photoshop of the picture during... Um, did he like uh, like copy us on that? Yeah. Did he for real? Yeah, that, it, was, that, it was on the couch pilot. That was thing. like a guy who would go around and like solve mysteries or something in a train, right? Yeah. yeah. And then some people, yeah, there's like a final showdown or something in there. Yeah. He, he went to that spot. Yeah. He went to that spot that was in one of our pilots. Yeah. That's madness. It is. And what was that on Instagram? Uh, Facebook. 
I'm not on Facebook. I didn't see that. That's tremendous. That's, that's outstanding. That's one of the coolest things we've ever had. Yeah. Yeah, Tip of the, the cap. Yeah. He, he not only does he like travel just to go to Clayton Town, right. Sherville, mm-hmm. he even goes and does this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he's is he st- is he coming to America? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are officially making a sequel to that. Did you know that? Yeah, that's what I heard. Are they really? Yeah, yeah. And oh, Arsenio Hall goodness. will be in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will. He's bringing the whole dog pound with him. Um, so you, you you could tell that was Eddie Murphy, right? I could totally tell that you were Eddie Murphy. The blackface, I don't think was necessary to do so. But I wasn't I'm totally so sure you weren't <laughs> having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Chris Tuckley, our UK listener, is coming to America. And honestly, at this point, he may have already been... This re- this is the releases on August nineteenth. Oh, yeah. he, he may have been. And honestly, very soon I think we'll have some voicemails from him. Oh, that'd be great. So that is fantastic. And also, I will say, Chris Tuckley has sent us an email uh, littered with new links for failed pilots. Sure. I think he was alarmed at the the lack of links we have left to do. Like he was scared. We, you and I are almost at the mercy. Uh, like I, I strongly suspect you will pass away before the links. We've exhausted all of our links, but he's provided with us with a few more. Okay, so when Matt starts hosting with you after I die, you'll have some fresh. Yeah, we'll definitely keep the show going after you die. <laughs> Don't worry about that, buddy. Chris Tuckley's a gift. Let's he just ignore he that. Awesome. He is. He is the. He's probably number one with the bullet. Um, all right, that's enough of that shit. Usually, we make a phone call, but I'm not going to do it because Blake doesn't want it, and I'm trying to um, make peace with him. What do you think about that, Blake? I was very good to call Molly while she's in Gulf Shores. Should we call her? Sure. For real? Yeah, I don't care. All right, we'll call Molly. This can only go one way. I'm gonna tell you, you've been dancing around here in your underwear in front of everybody. She's got she's got the same last name as you, right? <laughs> yeah, legally binding. I doubt she's going to answer the phone. I don't know. We'll get an update. She might think I'm injured. Does she know about the puke? She might. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She had pictures. I sent pictures of each pile to her or my mother-in-law. Nine, di- Nine different piles? We do like a vomit collage. Hello? Molly, this is Jason. Blake's not dead. I'm, we're just recording. I figured. I kind of had took me a minute to remember that it was Monday night. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have answered my phone call? Well, I would have been like, oh, no, oh, no, there's something wrong. But then I'm like, oh, that's right, it's Monday night. I like it when we call the wives of people, and they're like, their first gut reaction is, my God, something is wrong. Oh, that's not, yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> the case. Heather, Heather has asked me to not call her anymore. <laughs> it, oh, just period. No, you, just period. It has to be text. Like You if, can't if, call your wife anymore. No, no, she thinks if I'm calling that something tragic has happened, so I can only text so now what I do is I text ahead of the call and I wait for the acknowledgement. <laughs> I'm going to call you. Everything's fine. And then we go from there. It is weird how phone calls have been, are now like a sign of an emergency. What, what do you think about that, Molly? I would have to agree. Are you in because Gulf Shores? I'm sorry, go ahead. Because nobody actually makes a phone call anymore. It's all via text message. That's exactly right. Are you in Gulf Shores right now? I'm, yes, I am. I am currently getting ready to get to the pool. I'm staring at the pool, and there's a beach right over there. And Why would you get in the pool if there's a fucking beach there? <laughs> yeah, 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 that really struck a That's chord with, with Blake. That's like here. going yeah. to Gulf Shores when you already have a pool here. I've never, I've never seen this angry. I think she just got hit by a wave. I, I, I was there, there's a lot of sand in, at the beach. Well, that, that's what. That's why it's called a beach. He's a little he's a little high strung because of the dogs, Molly. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. What, what were you needing, Jason? Um, well, two things, I guess. Um, and thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, but, oh, yeah. but, but but the first first thing is uh, Blake showed me a collage that he made of all the piles of vomit that the dogs had put in the house. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So that'll be a discussion that you two will have later, I'm sure. Um, no, that happens. And that, he's were upset. I'm not discussing it any further. That's fine. You and I can talk later. Um, <laughs> the uh, the next thing is that he um, apparently he's been dancing around the house while you're gone in your underwear. That's not he, true. No, he's he, been doing no, that. No, no, true. no. He, he, I, I was doing that to be to make a joke. But he, he, he oh. but he, but he says he loves the movie Risky Business. <sighs> I don't even really know what to say to that. I, 
Yeah. He can do what he wants. Let him have a good time. Yeah, that's, I, th- I agree with you completely. Um, yeah. Thank you for answering our phone call. I just wanted to talk to you and get a Gulf Shores update and tell you about the vomit. Yeah, um, it's a yellow flag today, which means it's a moderate surf and moderate riptides. Um, I just spent a bunch of money making uh, a uh, reservation tomorrow for parasailing. Ooh. You're going to do, do that on the ocean? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in the ocean. Oh, very cool. Is she going to get up in the air? Are you going to get up in the air? No, but Eli is. Oh, and you, sh- then, you should totally do uh, it. No. Um, and then we're going to go to dolphin cruising, and then I'm going to go on a jet boat cruise jet boat thingy and we just got back from dinner at lulu's where we sat on a dock and had crab cakes for dinner sounds heavenly i had some microwave hot dogs and potato chips (laughs) well there you go um this is a a trip that you've been saving up for you you had got a second job specifically for this trip is that right um no not specifically for this trip but yes it, it, it helped yes well, I'm very proud of you, and I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Jason, maybe you want to tell Thank Molly. Thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe you want to tell Molly what Blake agreed to earlier in dispute resolution. About and, the guests? No, no. Well, no, about how, how shredded he's going to be in about six weeks. Oh, um, everyone in the room, which is just Matt and I, we both agree oh, okay. that physically Blake has deteriorated in ways that no <laughs> one could have predicted over the past few years. So um, hmm. it, uh, we have a we, – Blake and I had a, a dispute recently I'm sure you're aware of. And uh, part of the resolution is that he's going to do push-ups every day, and he's going to get ripped. Really? I'm not so sure. It's it's the problem is his uh, arms. I, I'm pretty sure the problem is all the beer he drinks and his beer gut. I bet you if he just stopped drinking beer and then maybe cut out the uh, eight helpings of food and snack cakes in the middle of the night. What if he found a way to do push-ups with his stomach? <laughs> hey, that might work. Okay. Or you know, or he could just go to kickboxing with me in the morning and get an all over workout. Does Brianna still do that with you? No, uh uh-uh. uh. Brianna, no. Brianna, Brianna. Okay. Uh, well, uh, but, but, but you've been doing it for like months now? Um, no, I quit, but I started back up um huh. about five weeks ago. You need to kick his ass in the shape. All right, go have uh, a he does. Go, yeah, okay. go have a great time in the pool or the beach or whatever the hell you're doing, and uh, be safe we're gonna, out there. We're going to be in the pool, and then we're going to the beach in a little bit. Awesome. Have a great time. Okay. We'll see you when you get back. All right. All right Take lo- care of them. Don't let them do something stupid. All right. I love you. Bye. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Uh, bye, honey. Uh, love you. I uh, miss you, too. She don't, see what I'm saying? He always wants, like, whatever someone gives to someone else, he wants an equal portion of that. Obviously, I have portion control problems. That's my favorite song, <laughs> Portion Control. I'm just going to let that sit out there. And yeah. He's a good counselor. Uh, today, we discussed the pilot episode of Let's Join Joni from the Year of Our Lord, 1950. Great year. 1950, uh, uh, a great year, uh, some would say. I was, I just said it. I was negative 25 years old. I was negative 31. And put me at negative 32. Wow. Right, there you go. Wow. Uh, how do you feel to be the young buck in the room? By what? By negative six or eight months, something like. Um, I think you and I are like four, three, four months. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say. <clears throat> that this, which means our parents had sex around the same time. Is what it means. So which one of our moms carried us for thirteen months? <laughs> <laughs> Within days of each other, our parents had sex. Oh, not with e- each sure, other, right. but each yeah, other. Right. See, I was well, thrown off the, by that. Yeah. And then I was also thinking, you know, like. Like, uh, you know, the semen need to ferment to, you know, mm-hmm. in certain... It ferments. Roberto Fermente. Yeah, it, Roberto Fermente. In, in some, it Roberto Fermentes. In some atmospheres, it probably takes less time than others. You know? I was a preemie by, uh, like, four months. Yeah. And I was uh, and I was overbaked by about four months. That's why so he's got that t- big callus on the top of his head. <laughs> callus of the county. Um, but it all worked out. I mean, so sure. far... 1950, oh my goodness, the greatest generation, right in the middle of the century. It's not 1950 right now, holy Moses, no, it's 2019, but we have to go back to 1950, in our minds alone, and we do that so we can talk about things that happened in that year, so we can get that mind frame, because we're going to talk about a show that came out damn near 70 years ago, and it's not fair to judge it by today's standards. No, I mean, because we're in 
an age of electronics. We're uh, age social, of information. Information. Social. Me- See, he's got to one up me. Like he can, I'm just see. adding. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. He's complimenting. Oh, social media. <laughs> All right, like computers and, and stuff. But, and like computers, you know what I mean? Right, but <laughs> we can't judge this pilot based on 2019. It would be ridiculous. It would be unfair. It Obviously, would be unfair. It would get, they would all get zeros. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to go back to 1950 when there was a lot of things that we have now that they didn't have back then. Right. Uh, number one, Band-Aids, right? Mm-hmm. In 1950, we didn't have Band-Aids, right? No Band-Aids, none to speak of. Right. Uh, in 1950, there was no such thing as a Palomino horse. Mm-hmm. It was just either a, a brown horse or a black horse. Well, hold on. Is there such thing as a Palomino horse right now? Yeah. Is okay. that like a crossbreed? Is that what we're talking about here? Well, even, yeah, when the Indians had... Oh, um, half-breed. A half-breed? Right. No, I said Palomino. Palomino. It's, it's, it's got different colors on it. It's got three or three different colors on it. Calico. Does that have that ice cream? Ooh, the ice cream. That's right. Ooh, yeah, that does. that's what I mean. um, Guys, what are we Napoleon. doing? Let's get out of here. Let's Napo- go get some yeah. ice cream. <laughs> Napoleon ice cream. Oh, guys, sorry. I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm a super fat guy, my wife says, so I... I can't have any We're going to find cream. you some lean ice cream. Yeah. Lean some, cream. Some, lean cream. Uh, <laughs> find some, you that, some uh, lean cream for that growth. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You want to spread it all over that growth. Some flavored ice. I can't wait to have some flavored ice. <laughs> Put that lean cream all over your flim flam. <laughs> 2000, uh, 1950. I'm not done. Oh, yeah. More, what else was not back, back then? And in, in 1950, we sure as hell didn't have off track betting. The OTB. Yep. Okay. DOB. But here, here's what we did have. American Bowling Congress ends all white males rule. That's August 1st. Huh. All white. Hmm. Now, I saw you bowl recently. It was pathetic. I wish you would have came like 45 minutes earlier. I really felt bad at after, like, like I wanted you to come and see that 212, not that 158. I saw you bowl at the Landmark Bowling Center sure. in Peoria, Illinois. You're filling in for someone. Sure. I, uh, I come into the bowling alley, and I would say like 12, 12... 14 lanes are filled. Yeah, it's a small summer league. Three people per team, all the lanes filled. I'm over there, I'm looking around, and I tell you what, it's it's pretty much all white. No, not really. There's there oh I would say that well It's ninety <clears throat> to ninety five percent. No. no? I would, yeah, I would say eighty five percent. Oh, okay. My mistake. <laughs> See how far you guys have come. Just that yeah. Thank you. Um when's the last time you went bowling, Matt? Oh gosh. There was a stretch, I would say, college years, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, Just like say by the Bell, we, the college years. We, weekly would not have been, yeah, maybe a little bit before that, like ICC days. Um, I would say probably the last time for me, easily six months ago. Yeah. Do you, do you like bowling? I enjoy it when I get out there, you bet. You're a very competitive person in general. Do you, does that carry over to bowling? Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to win bowling? I have a lot of n- no. I'd, I'd say there's only a handful of things that really get my competitive. Like, I would much more enjoy watching someone um, spike the ball into the ground or that person be myself. Sure. Yeah. What's that one game on uh, Super Nintendo you like? Gradius? Gradius 3? You want to talk about now that game? You're competitive that, there. Oh, you bet. With myself. And that's really the trick to <laughs> me is that some folks, they get in the way of me being competitive with myself. <laughs> right. I, just want, I, just want, I just want a good shot at me. Right. Yeah. Have you ever played? Have you ever played the card game Garbage? Uh, my kids taught this to me, and I, I think it's a great card game. Garbage Pail Kids? No, just it's it's just called Garbage. It's okay. A, it's, a, it's you use a deck of cards. I never heard of that. I, I know Garbage Pail Kids sure. come in card form. I didn't know if that's what you're talking <laughs> about. Well, there's no game. There's no Garbage Pail game. There's got to be. I guarantee. Garbage Pail Kids movie. sounds like it came out in the fifties. Garbage Pail Kids. There's actually a television series that oh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember if we're going to do that or not. If it had multiple episodes, I will say this. Um, that is about like uh, children, uh, like being dead or zombies or something, right. right? Right. Could be. Have you ever have you ever seen a Garbage Pail Kid card? I'm afraid not. You ne- you know what they are though? I don't. Garbage Pail Kids. You've never heard of that? Mm-mm. Do you know Cabbage Patch Kids? You bet. These are the antithesis, basically. It says, everyone loves a fresh-smelling, beautiful, young baby doll. And I, honestly, even as a, a young, very young child, I personally had a Cabbage Patch. I had patch. one. I remember you had one. Yeah. Your mom had to go to Chicago or something to well, get we one? we lived in Chicago, and she you know, she was a single parent, and and she, I got one for Christmas. And it was like, I knew how much, like how hard it was for her to get it. 
Yeah, because they were hard to get early and mid eighties. Co- tough, and how much it cost? It's kind of the tickle me Elmo at the times. It's, sure. it's exactly yep. what it was, and it it spawned all these different things. And someone said, you know what? That's the nice, friendly, squeaky side of of uh, Cabbage Patch. Let's let's turn the dial to negative ten, mm-hmm. and they have garbage pail kids. I cannot believe you've never heard. I, of this. I can't say I have. These mm-hmm. are these are in the, it usually it's in pretty much in card form. There are the other forms, like you said, like a TV show or a movie, but. There are cards basically where it's like, like Aunt Eddie or something. Where it's it's a, a, a ill will. See, yeah, it's ill will. It's it's kids like covered in. Uh, I do slime. not recognize. There's no chance I recognize. Really? Yeah. There's brains. Sometimes they're inside out. It's basically young cabbage patch looking kids. Now that's uh, now which one is that? <laughs> that's uh, Jolted John. So okay, so that's based off of John Cusack from the film Say Anything, yeah. where he's got the uh, boombox over his head. Really. Right? But it's uh, only- and this is like the most famous one, I would say. Atom bomb, like that's the yes, most famous. one. I agree. See, his head ex- has, has got a nuclear I was bomb shield- in his head. <laughs> I was shielded from that. Now I'm afraid of under that rock. That was that's hardcore. Burl in speaking wall? of under a rock, Burl in wall. Yeah. So uh, that's hardcore '80s stuff, and it's kind of made a resurgence in the past five years. I think you can st- they make new ones now. But it's, it's a lot of boogers and vomit and snot. Just gr- gross out kid sure. puke stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I'm going wow. to I'm gonna get you a set. I can't believe I just told someone about Garbage Pail Kids for the first time. Maybe we didn't have that in India. You know what I mean? Like In India? India. India. <laughs> Most people don't know that Matt grew up in India. <laughs> well, you can tell. I mean. His accent. <laughs> my, th- my thick Indian accent. His very, yeah. his very, very dark black hair. It's the way he says gravy. <laughs> Right, only people from India wear visors. August seventh, police bar white players Lou Churban, Stan Mirko, and Frank Dial from playing in Negro League. They had their own league. Black guys had their sure. own league. Yeah. Well, I assume that's baseball. Yeah. So the white guys like out playing the Negro League. Yeah, they're like, well, you, you know, you need to have some kind of organization. I, I might as well join the league. Am I saying Negro too much? I don't. I don't think. I mean, when you're referencing the name of it was, I wasn't just then. But when you're still in the context of, to me, that's like that's the that's the appropriate the proper, word. the proper noun of that name of that organization. Okay, so I can say I can say Negro. Like you say, the United Negro College Fund, right? Yeah, they, that's something. Don't you think? Don't you think they should change that name? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Everything. Everyone is so woke. Everyone loves to point a finger. I can't, I, I can't get over the fact that the LBGQT, whatever, you know, still has the word queer in it. Hmm. To me, that is a word that, like, is not friendly. But I think but nowadays um, it's becoming more accepted, and it, they, they've, backed, they've decided to embrace it because now they have 47 other names that they don't like. They're like, ah, queer's not really that bad. That's well, what I was going to say. Maybe some of these things are, like, almost prioritized. But, like, know? black people so, have embraced the N-word so much, you know what I mean? Oh, they've embraced it within themselves, but you, you or I can't say, what up? But I say it all the time at home. <laughs> to who? The mirror. Oh. No. Oh. Uh, hey, you're starting with the man in the mirror. Just. I won't make a change. Tear down those walls and just. The Berlin Wall? Yeah. <laughs> Re-tear down the Berlin Wall. Build it up. <laughs> Tear it right back down. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, bur- uh, build it back up. Build a bear it back up. Build a bear, build a bear back up with then, stuffing, and then Berlin and then back get, down, and then get uh, Night Rider, <laughs> yeah, to sing on his get Hassel off with his electric coat. Yep, and then uh, it was his powerful chords that that sure. crumble the stone. Sure, many people don't know that. Yeah, August fifteenth, eight point six earthquake in India, Matt's home to, home country, yeah. uh, kills yeah, it's bigger than that. I felt yeah, twenty thousand to thirty thousand people killed them. I I don't know why is there a discrepancy. Of ten thousand people. Well, you know? because they don't have good. They don't have good. Uh, uh, their senses, senses is poor. Senses. Their senses are poor. I mean, no, how many senses? You ever, do you have? You ever, I've got five. You ever ate curry or even smelled it? I, I love, love it. Sound like six. Uh-uh. I got it. Eight, seven eight. or eight. You have upwards of eight senses. I think they have seven, right? I'm. Bet- I'm. That's I might. Wonders. I'm gonna be eight or nine. If now that I think about it. Now, Andre the Giant is the eighth wonder of the world, and China is the ninth wonder of the world. Mm-hmm. I think it's wonders, not senses. Oh, that I have? <laughs> I think you have nine wonders. Could be. I mean, I, I don't even know necessarily what to add to that. I'm yeah, just, well, I just well, prefer to almost accept it. Have you guys uh, ever been? Sure. Andre Giant is my eighth one. <laughs> you guys ever been to, uh, in an earthquake? Yes. Yeah? Where, was, where were you? Here, locally. 
Yeah. Wait. This would been like oh seven oh eight, right when uh, I was going to say right after we got married. Um, it was in the middle of the night, and it was kind of bizarre how we reacted to it. Middle of the night, we we wake up. You were woke. I was woke, and Heather looks at me and she goes, "Do you feel that?" And I go, "Yeah, the room's shaking." <laughs> and we rolled over and went back to bed. <laughs> That's how that worked. That's funny. What, what, what was it? A, a six point what? Eight point six. Oh, okay, because yeah, we because California did, place yeah, you ought to be. They got a five something, didn't they? It no, was it was high. there was like a six something, and then the next, and then there was a. They were saying it's like it's just like a term to a bigger one. I mean, how many how many people were in California? You know? Not like a thirty three 40, billion thousand three billion <laughs> somewhere between there. <laughs> hey, uh, fans out there, fact check that for us. We'll do Let another us fact check, Matt. Why did we choose to watch Let's Join Joni? Well, it's going to have to have been uh, free of charge, online, and must not have had more than one episode. Had that's we pretty do. good. Had that's we do. Good. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's as fast as your fastest time, Blake, but that's pretty quick. Sure. I feel like I've answered it so many times that I went for a little bit more of a brisk pace. Well, you know what? Now you're in, in competition with yourself to best your time. Right. That's Brandy's the only kind of competition style. I appreciate. <laughs> so Matt knows, but you could probably ask yourself, why are you, you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. No, please. <laughs> I, I I have a question for you then. So if you if you were your biggest opponent, mm-hmm. right? Is this just competitive or is this in life too? How do you how do you handle losing to yourself? <laughs> very disgracefully. You're um, a sore loser. I'm a very sore loser towards myself. And um, but how do you cope with that? Like how do you talk to yourself? I don't. That? I bury it very deep. And uh, podcasts are my outlet. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> you know what? I can relate. You and me both. Mm-hmm. So you're probably saying, where can I find Let's Join Joni? We can do so by uh, subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Matt. And you'll know what to do, too. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. What would happen if I kicked one of those dogs? I feel like it's coming through on the mic. No, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing I could do. I first mean, I, I first keep... day of prison rules. I go find the biggest dog. I kick it right in the fucking ribs. Speaking of prison, can I talk to you about something? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see where a, this goes. A friend of mine at work suggested I watch uh, Wentworth on Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's uh, an Australian version. Basically, it's an Australian version of uh, Orange Oz? is the New Black. Mm-hmm. Oh. But it's 10,000 times better than Orange is the New Black. Why is that? Uh, it's... Uh, Violent. It's uh, graphic. It's there's. I've never seen so much blood in a show before. It's very well written. It, it doesn't. Orange is the New Black kind of makes prison look fun at times, mm. and this is not fun. Can I ask a question? Sure. That was it. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, there's seven seasons since Friday night at uh, five o'clock. I, I'm now on season three, episode five. Uh, there are 12, 12 shows. Well, is this is it is it based on Orange is the no, New no, Black? No, 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 no. It's just like... It's yeah, its own thing. It's like The Office. It's like The Office, British Office. That's exactly the uh, example I was going to use. Okay. But this, I think this is... This is seven, how, many, how many seasons was Orange is the New Black? I the, think it's... And it's. I think it just released its final season, which is maybe seven? Okay, so it, it, it's one of those things like... It's just very much more gritty and very much more interesting. But you're but you're right. Office started in the UK, sure. and then there's like German, Japanese, sure. all American. Uh, uh, the IT crowd. There you go. Yeah, we saw the IT crowd. That was and that was awful. Which leads me back to Jessica let's, let's St. Clair. Joan, join Joni. All right, fair enough. Um, summary of the pilot: Sales girl Joni tries to impress a handsome man by joining a fitness club. Matt, I'm gonna start with you. You want to grade that? This is only the second time I've graded it. Um, now having seen it, I'm gonna go with not having seen it. No, no, no. Now having oh, seen, okay. now having seen it, I would go with. Um, I don't know. I feel like you're gonna be. I, I'm not sure. I've been in the room where you've graded one favorite. Just compete yourself. Compete with yourself. B don't, minus. Don't compete with me. B minus. I, I, I need a little more than that. I, I yeah. It's, it's a B. It's a B. Okay, mm-hmm. that's fine. Uh, interesting facts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the one and only Jason as he provides you with this week's interesting facts. You don't know what hard times are, daddy. Please do not discuss your 
thoughts, opinions with anyone else regarding these interesting facts. Do not taint someone else's experience. Listen to them, absorb them, fight with yourself if you have to, but keep your opinions to yourself. I meant to do this one. Just don't, just don't do it, guys. Uh-oh. Uh, this unsold television pilot has entered the public domain. This, mean no, this means no one owns it, and we could do anything we wanted to this pilot. Oh, wow. Anything. We could have just played it. We could have like, recorded it. and just That could have just been the it. show. And we will. <laughs> A little bonus episode for next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, produced in 1950. For our Patreon supporters, <laughs> listen to an uh, audio version of a show that you can watch on YouTube for free. It's coming just for you. Uh, produced in 1950 at CBS Columbia Square in Hollywood as a proposed live weekly or bi-weekly series based on their radio show, Leave It to Joan. Yep. That's an interesting fact. Fact. I knew that fact, but... You knew that. Yeah. Uh, best remembered for its star, Joan Davis, who would later star in the popular uh, series from 1952 to 1955 sitcom, I Married Joan. That's correct, too. Fact. How do you know these? Uh, the second one I know because after this plays, uh, episode one of I Married Joan comes on on YouTube. Oh. There you go. And if, and if, you, if, you know, if you're kind of thin on interesting facts, I, you just let me know. I'm going to finish them up, and if you got anything to add, please. Okay. Uh, Joan Davis's career spanned uh, vaudeville, film, radio, and television. Davis had a successful earlier career as a B-movie actress and a leading star of 1940s radio comedy. Very good. Fact. Fact. Uh, another fact. Uh, in 1961, <laughs> Joan Davis died of a heart attack. Uh, just a mere two years later, in a tragic fire, her mother, daughter, and two grandkids were killed. Mercy. In? A tragic fire. Okay. Yeah, you're stealing all my facts. That's fine. Mm. Oh, I thought you were done. That's why I, I thought oh, you no, no, looked no, at no. me. Okay. Nope. I've got more. I've had I, both, both of those. She died at the age of 48. Yeah, 48. In her Palm Springs, California Ooh, home. I'm close. I, I think it was that same home that the, everyone else died in. Oh, they, they kept living there? Both in, the, in Palm Springs, yeah. It must, have been, some, it must have been some kind of like curse. She sold her soul to the devil. Like Four uh, of her family members. Yeah. Like who? That, like the devil the, that went the, down to Georgia? No, no, the guy from the cross. He the, sold his soul to the devil so he could play guitar. Okay. The blues guy. Yeah, Charlie Daniels. Muddy Waters. <laughs> Muddy Waters. <laughs> Um, Jimmy Page. Joan Davis has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one for her contribution to the motion picture industry at 501 Vine Street and one for radio at uh, in the 1700 block of Vine. Fact. That's cool. Fact. Well, don't comment on the facts. Oh, sorry. I'll kill you. Sorry. <laughs> Will you shank me? Also stars Joe Flynn, best known for his role on television's McHale's Navy. Never heard of that one. I think that was Jim. He's the only other guy in this program. There's two guys. The no, other I guy, don't remember that. Wait, you know Mikhail's the Navy, right? Huh. No. Well, I think they did a reboot of that with uh, Kelsey Grammer in the 90s. Oh, okay. I got you. Uh, it was just a movie. It was a comedy film. Okay. Um, and finally, not finally, I guess, uh, also stars Joseph Kearns. Uh, you may know him as the original Mr. Wilson in uh, Dennis the Menace. Do we have Molly here? On, on Look at this. Interesting. Oh, they're on the beach. There's a little kid. Watch out for that wave. Are we looking at the Gulf of Mexico? We're looking at the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is where the cocaine comes from. I this can't is, hear you. They bring the cocaine into this Gulf area. I can I'm doing a show. Look, honey, it's the ocean. Very nice. Is that your wife in a bathing suit? Yeah. Hey, yeah. put that phone down like this. Would you look at that? I can't, I can't hear anything. Because you're next to an ocean. You're next to the ocean. She knows she's by the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking bitch. She knows she's it's next a to the fucking them. bitch. Eli's down getting hammered. Getting hammered? He, he, Eli's down there getting hammered, is what she said. There's no age restrictions. Well, we're, kinda, we're doing a show right now. Honey. <laughs> this is part of the show now. Honey, we're doing a show right now. We're, we're doing a show. Tell her, tell her, her dogs are dead. 
Tell her the dog's what a What a colorful I will FaceTime do we're having. I will, uh, I will do it. Enjoy yourselves. Stay away from stingrays. S- tell them the dogs definitely aren't dead. The is strong. Look at Eli. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Love you. Love you. Bye. Boy, oh boy. Jesus boy, Christ. that got out of hand. <laughs> Yeah. Why did you tell her That's sister a, that the dogs were dead? What I wanted to say was, uh, mm-hmm. hey, I'll tell my wife to get into the ocean when you say, hey, thanks for watching my dogs. She hasn't told you thank you? Didn't say I appreciate it. Has not said thank you. She actually brought them over and still didn't say anything to me. See how he keeps inventory of all that? Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I'm in logistics. I'm all about inventory. I'm an inventory coordinator. <laughs> Got to ship it somewhere. <laughs> right, right, right. Ship it right in their direction. <laughs> did you guys hear what I said about Joseph Kearns? He sure. was in the Navy. No, no, no. He Sorry. was best known as Mr. Wilson from Dennis the Menace. Mr. Wilson! Sorry about that. I apologize. These... I didn't know she was going to... GD Garden Lanterns. That's right. <laughs> you guys ever see uh, the original Dennis the Menace? Yeah, the TV um, show? The black and white one? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever watch it? No, I don't remember that one. I remember one that came out when we were kids. Are you talking about the... The Orchid and the whole thing. And, oh, yeah. that was the movie. The movie. Yeah, I used to watch the show on Nickelodeon, uh, the reruns. They had Nick in the afternoon. Night. Yeah. Well, no, they, I think they had it in the afternoon oh, for really? kids. Yeah. Uh, that, that, I enjoyed that. It was good. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. That, Quick, that kid, fun. I love it. I love it when a guy came home from work. He had a suit on. Yeah. And a hat, and he uh, plopped that off there, and he went and sat down. He had a he had a, a vest on and a tie and, and a gin he, ricky and lit up a cigar. His wife brought him a uh, a drink. Con- and, yeah, gin ricky. Gin Ricky. And she didn't bother him again till she was time for her to say, honey, it's time for dinner. Do you ever think about becoming an alcoholic? I thought about it many times. It's, it sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Um, no. Is no? It, no, okay. I, I, can't, right. I, I can't say that. Maybe though. I'm just romanticizing it. I, I think know. that the romanticizing part of it, yes. It oh, is, that but, does? See, now but, you get it. But reality in no way, shape, or form. Uh, I don't like reality. <laughs> um... Let's Reality is for people who lack imagination. Uh, uh, interesting facts over, I guess. Whew, good job. Barely made it. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Jason got some Twitter responses. Uh, no, I don't. They're all dead. I, you know what? I feel like you don't like the commercials. You don't like the phone calls. So I don't, I'm not doing any of that. I, I, I did call Molly under your... Uh, advisement, but I'm not. I don't have a commercial ready. Is there anything you want to do to break up the show right here? No, I'm ready to just move along. All right, good. This is probably a really long fucking show, so let's <laughs> let's get through it. Um, I'm gonna set the clock for ten minutes. We're gonna talk about let's join Joni. Matt, do you want to start us off today? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Go right ahead. Okay, so um, it starts off with her having some kind of lucid dream. Like narrating herself sleeping, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, what, what I found was interesting, and I'm not going, I'm not trying to cut off, but there is, you know, the theme music, big band. Then a narrator starts talking about the hustle and bustle and mm-hmm. work life, and then she then starts narrating, like you said, yeah. this dream that she's having. So you're seeing her, yeah, romp around in the bed, but yet she's talking like she's watching it. It's, it's right. You have one nor- narration and then a second that was, narration. That was yeah, so that's weird. a good point. And then it's kind of like reverse Truman Show. Like she knows it's going on, so she's kind of watching herself. Sure. If Molly didn't interrupt with that phone call earlier, I was mm-hmm. going to get to interesting facts that the original name of this show was Reverse Truman Show. How about that? Wow. Uh, that's very I apologize interesting for my fact. Wife <laughs> uh, yeah, so she was kind of like having a... A, a wet dream about the guy that <laughs> oh, just she... in a way it was a, it was it was it was getting there if she wouldn't have woke up about a guy that just moved in two rooms down the, the announcer says let's join Joni right, right. Like, before that and like the audience claps and it, it, it's very much a 1950s sitcom it's, it's very much a, a set that they're on that that fourth wall is is very clearly not there it's not like anything you would see today where you you know it's like a oh, a single camera sitcom right, it's very, very wide traditional shots, very yeah. wide shots so um, at the climax of her dream, an alarm uh, wakes see? up. See? Just because I said the word climax. <clears throat> no, you said the climax of her dream. The alarm wakes her up. She stumbles around her apartment. And this is where I notice, oh, boy, the video quality is just awful. Yeah, it's very blurry. This was better on my phone, but I had to finish it at home. Like mm-hmm. on a, And once it got up to a bigger screen, it was done. I mean, okay. it was rough. Yeah, so watch it on your phone. Basically, yeah. they did a, a, a joke where um, you've seen this many times since, but it's basically like, "Hey, I'm going to go in this door," and while the door swings in, 
and then swings back out. I will come out fully changed. She's like, I'm going to take a shower. So she walks in and immediately walks out completely redone. Right, and the, and the crowd is just... They love it. They love they it. Have, what'd, she, what'd she say? She said it took me a little longer than it does usually. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she's getting ready for her day. And, and you can already tell uh, this is a, a young lady who uh, is known for physical comedy. Mm-hmm. Or she's... What's one of her vaudeville kind of thing? She's known Probably for so, yeah. physical comedy. When you think of like... Dick Van Dyke or Jerry Lee Lewis at the time. Yep. And, you know, this came out in 1950. 1951 is when the uh, I Love Lucy came Pro- out. Probably right before Lucy. Yeah, and so it's that kind of, like, female slapstick mm-hmm. kind of, like... It's it's the Jim Carrey of women in the 50s. So my wife... My see what? wife! See what I did there? Yeah. I, I yeah. gave it yeah. a second. Thanks a lot for I, that. I <laughs> gave that it a great. second. Um, she was in the room while I was finishing the last... Whatever... 10, 12 minutes. Darn it, Blake. And um, she said, this feels very I Love Lucy. And I didn't know where to place it. Like, I was struggling as I was watching this going, what frame of reference do I do I have sure. for a show this old, 70 years old? Well, knock, knock, knock on the door. Uh, she opens up, and it's Mr. Benson. And he, he's the one that moved in, the handsome yep. young guy that moved Tall, in. Tall, dark, and handsome. Two rooms down, because she lives in like a, a studio. Like a one room kind of yep, absolutely, uh, and uh, he is out of eggs, and she and she does the typical girl fumbling with her words. She's ensorcelled. She's like, <laughs> what the fuck? She she is ensorcelled. He's right. Have you ever? You've never. You've heard of that word before? I've yes, never heard. Yeah, of we, it. I have. Yeah. <laughs> we. Uh, she's laying it on pretty thick, and uh, she's real nervous, and she's all the Freudian slips are coming out. And uh, anyway, he flexes by like putting up her Murphy bed, and then he actually flexes his muscles. Right, and he seems like kind of an old school douche to me. Like, like this is the douche that like modern day douches are looking at, and saying that's the guy. That's my guy. Well, at first he seemed like a nice guy, but once he flung that bed, he's kind of wrapped up in himself. Then he got wrapped up. Then it was all about health, and you know, and, and, yeah. and, and there, and there she, becomes the theme for the rest of the show. Sure. Yep. And uh, she uh, sits him down, and she's uh, there, there's a lot of physical comedy stuff. You can't really tell what's going on because it's so blurry. You yeah. can't really see the, what the bits are. Well, she's making him breakfast, making him toast, and she's like, "Hey, how many how many lumps do you want in your eyes?" You know, those right. kind of slips that she's making. She puts something into his either coffee or bowl, but from what I can gather. She didn't unwrap it. Right, Martin, it was a sugar like, threw cube. It in, sugar cube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, she's she asks him. Uh, she becomes very infatuated with. Uh, she asks him if he's into like marriage and uh, and having children. It's a bizarre thing to never have met your neighbor in an apartment building to having them sit down at a table and start really getting to know each other and talking about things like marriage and children. But that's exactly what they do. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Hey, I'm all about health." Marriage mm-hmm. and babies and yep. strong women, and she strong and she is women. completely swept by this because, of course, every woman back then, all she wants to do is is get the newest vacuum cleaner she found in a, a good housekeeping sure. magazine, and She's, then make dinner with her children. Yeah. Anyway, so he, old days. so he's about ready to take off, and he's, he says, "I'm going to leave you with three words." And what are the three words you always think? I love you, right? But instead, he says, "Hey, lady, you're you're cracking up." Those are the three words he leaves her with. He says you need to build yourself up, and because he, he believes the physically strong should only mate with the physically strong. Yeah, that so, was that was kind of dark in its own way, right? Like that. It was a little Hitler. Yeah. Dark, <laughs> yes, a little Nazi Reich. That's uh, kind of what that felt. Jim like. Jim Benson's trying to create the master race in, <laughs> right. in this sitcom pilot. And this was the vehicle that they chose <laughs> to deliver this message through. The next scene is Joseph Kearns, aka Mr. Wilson. And he's tapping on a drum or something, or like a hat box. Yeah, it's and a hat it, box. And it says hats by Anat- Anatole. I couldn't get his name, really. Yeah, I couldn't either. Anyway, I, he's very effeminate. Well, that was one of the questions I, I, I wrote in here. I said, I said, is her boss, you know, a Liberace. Guy? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, gay guy. Yeah. Um, and he's he's also kind of pissed because uh, she's late. He, yeah, he owns this is his hat shop. She's the sales lady, and she's she is late. And twice in this scene, he actually threatens to kill her and says, he does "I should say that. kill." Yeah, he's you. a little. Yeah, I don't know if I should kill myself or you. Right. <laughs> and then she, what did she say? Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, she's like she's talking to a customer, and she's like fantasizing kind of again about uh, the gym and having a husband. And this this broad broad is boy ass crazy. Sure. Um, Mrs. Huntington or Joni? Joni is oh, yeah. boy-ass jo- crazy. Joni is. Yeah. Oh, boy crazy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Huntington is the one that's, uh, and it, uh, when, when she's like, what kind of hat do you want? She goes, uh, something giddy and gay. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of, in the end, what we all want, right? Sure, I want to be Gideon Gay. Yeah. So, um, she's like, the, the, the customer is like, hey, I got an idea. If this guy's all end up being physical and health, why don't you join a health club? Yeah, it's, uh, what is it, Emerson... Fat Farm or something like that. Health Farm? Something like that? Yeah. I've got, said I've, health farm. I've got it later. There were parts of it, honestly, that I either couldn't understand it or whatever they were talking about or showing. No, me. she was, uh, this lady who was had some junk in the trunk, she was a bigger woman. You know, she was like, hey, I just went I just went to this and look at what it did for me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, she just, it makes you stronger, but not any And certain. so Joni starts to envy that, right? Right. And she's like, she's like I'm going to devise a plan. I'm going to get out of work to go to the health club. So she puts on, like, crap on her face and she calls it the purple plague and then her boss lets her out because he's an idiot because yeah because he's she has to go get a shot and that's the last time we see him right and then it goes and the rest of the show uh, up until the last three seconds but the last the rest of the show is she's going to this emerson health, health farm. farm yep mm-hmm. and uh she you know this is usually like an eight-week course she wants to do it all in one day. Yeah, you got to get it done today. And it's then it's just a bunch of physical comedy bits. Uh, yeah, it's with, a, it's about yeah. fifteen minutes it's here. Very of physical comedy. Three Stooges esque to me. It's yeah. a, it's a big a Amazonian woman, and she's in charge. And she's saying, "This is what we do. We eat every hour on the hour, and then we work you like like mad. We're gonna do aerobics, and then we're gonna do strength training. And they've got all these different sized ladies doing different exercises to keep. But some the of them are women. just like these homegrown exercises that she's very clearly got like." Right. Crawl into this box and then crawl out. It was a steam box. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was okay. Or uh, yeah, those are the classic steam boxes. Or or hey, or throw a, a scarf over your head and gallop around the room like right. a moron. Or and so at the end of this part, they the it was kind of funny. Chuckle, chuckle. She they put her on because she, she has to hurry up and finish. You know, they, you know, she's once it's all in one day. Yeah, she gets on an exercise bike. They wrap one of those vibrating things around her. Uh, they put uh, 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 juggling things. And then they put a, a, a dumbbell in her mouth. The, the strap around you that vibrates. Right. Yeah, yeah. They do all that and do it all at once. Yep. Um, they hand out fruit and nuts at one point, and like Joni gets a walnut, and she only gets one nut to eat. She can't open it, so she has like a fat lady sit on it. Right. That was like, that was like a funny part for me. Sure. I thought that was kind of funny. Yep. Anyway, it's five thirty. Everyone's dismissed, and yeah, they have her do all those exercises, and then uh, finally at the end. What do we see? We got her back at the apartment, and we only hear her voice and Jim's voice. We just hear the voices. Right, don't we? But, oh, I wouldn't yeah. say it was narrated. Okay, I think okay. we just heard them yeah. in there, and then it's, they're going out on a date. It, yeah. Whatever she did worked, it seems like, right? Except, except for the part where she's in a she's in a wheelchair. Is yeah, she not? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, with her like leg out. One of those full body. I thought. Like, I, well, I thought I missed something. Did she get injured working out? Is I'm that assuming what that's what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah, she had been taking the task in there for sure, and she was left debilitated. And uh, they're. Go- I don't know why Jim. Agrees to go out with a lady who is who in, is in not a, physically, yeah, in, in a in a, but they will for a first date. I mean, if they if they get cancer or if they get in a car accident when you're already dating, you have to hang out with them. But don't be the first date. Wait till they heal up. Well, that was right. Ten minutes. Nice. Nailed it. Experts. Holy Moses. Uh, usually I say, why didn't this show work? And, and we're pissing in the wind. But I actually have some information here. Oh, okay. Um, in late January, Variety reported, this is of 1950, uh, reported that the completed show uh, of Let's Join Jody will be flown to New York for this week to, uh, for a look-see by the, the web's top brass. CBS executive Harry Ackerman uh, was high on the show once it was completed, telling Variety a few weeks later that it was in the process of being shopped around to potential sponsors and that he anticipated a fairly high favorable response. In fact, the network was in the process of assembling several sitcoms anticipated for the fall 1951 debuts, among them a TV version of um, Our Miss Brooks and a yet unnamed show that would offer Desi Arnaz, Lucille Ball, and a Mr. and Mrs. format. Nice. Unfortunately, uh, the optimism over Davis's pilot show proved unfounded as uh, no sponsor materialized. Another year would go by before her television series would debut, the I Mary Joan or whatever that was, um, and in a short time would uh, much change in the new medium. Still, it was only to be expected that Davis would eventually headline her own television comedy show once the proper format emerged. So there's a little information sure. about maybe why the show didn't come to fruition. It sounded like a large part sponsors. Sure. And that's and, and we've we've a lot of those old ones that we've done, that's one of the big things is that was back then where it wasn't T V execs just making the decision. Right. It was you show it to potential big sponsors like Dove or some cigarette company, you know, yep. 
Yeah, Crest, Crest or somebody. Yeah. Right, right, Crest yeah. toothpaste was one, I think. Sure. We, we had you know, draw past the line was right. one. And then I think the Andrew sisters, those are both two good uh, examples of very early uh, television comedies that were kind of saying, hey, this is how you could use us to sell your right. products. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that because when it got to the point or gets to the point where it, why didn't it work, I was going to struggle. I legitimately kind of laughed at a handful of, part, a handful of parts. And... I wondered to myself, maybe there was a more on the business side sure. than there was on the production side. And, I, you know, I'm not a very good poker player, so I'm going to show my hand here in a minute. But I, I almost had two ratings for this show, two different ratings for the show. But, you know, one of the things I think maybe it didn't work was be, because she was still female. It's still a time where, you know, I mean, you had to be a big draw mm-hmm. to get, you know, to be a lead woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, Lila Love Lucy was a year later, but I would think that Lucille Ball was probably a bigger name than her, although she was still, a, you know, a decently known, you know, radio and TV person. Right. But I think it was maybe it was just, you know, just women in, as a lead still at that time is probably you had to really be able to knock it out of the ballpark and maybe hmm. sponsors. But also, you said something in your your notes about how is that a different computer? No. Oh, um, it's been so long since I saw you. We'll edit that out. Um, okay, so <laughs> it's not a new computer. Oh. He's hung up on it now. I know he is. Um, I'm gonna have a stroke. I think you're gonna have a stroke. Yeah. Why? It looks different. It's the same computer I've, I've I had for the past okay. couple of years. All right. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. This is new. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I just think that uh, that's what it was. It was more about, you know, the sponsors didn't want to take that risk on a woman is where they would take Dick Van Dyke. So, or, you okay. Know, or uh, uh, Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith is going to be right. the one I mentioned. You put yourself yeah. uh, back in, at that time in your mind. Sure, in my so, mind. So you're thinking the ladies can't headline a show. I, mean, I didn't know. This is, I'm not saying that okay, you think okay. that. I'm just saying as far as the times are concerned, this is 1950. This is the beginning of television. Sure, this is this right. is day don't one. Even know what's going on. This is post war. This is a brand new world. This is a yeah. whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> this oh, this is day Falsetto. one of television. This is saying what does television look like, and everyone looks around the room and says. I don't know. Yeah, I have no it idea. looks like a play that we have a bunch of. It looks like pictures. whatever people will will hand out money to make. It is a play. This lo- this is a play. Every setting is very small, and it's it's a, it's a straight shot on. This is a televised play. What we're seeing, right? And there's they go further to say uh, every week or bi weekly we are going to have live episodes. This is a play. Right. They are doing a play with. And you can tell it's a play no because uh, all the walls shake when people go by them, <laughs> and the mirror almost falls off. Because yep. it, it, it it was literally plywood with a couple two by fours behind it. Because if you watch this, there was a couple times I was like, "That's gonna fall on her." Mm-hmm. If this survives, are we seeing Joni get married? Are we? Or do we love the fact that she is this boy crazy kind of hungry for attention? I want the boy crazy hungry for attention. You got to keep her hungry for a yeah. couple seasons, right? Maybe a couple seasons. I would maybe. I could even buy a couple episodes, like introduce the kids and just watch her go crazy corralling them. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot more that. They oh, could you want to see Joni as a housewife? I think so. Do you want to see I the birth? Re- Do you want to see the birth? Well, I've seen a couple of those. Do you want to see the crowning? Hmm. Crowning achievement of having an <laughs> Emmy. I understand completely. That's not what I meant at oh. all. If that's what if that's what you're asking. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright. There's Molly again. Yeah, I can't believe she tried to like have a FaceTime conversation when she's on the beach of the Gulf of well, it's Mexico. Part of the charm, though, right? She like, knew we I were recording. Yeah, and she's got an ocean behind her making but noise. But she can't yeah. hear us. And look at us; we're still talking about it, right? Yeah. right. She, she did something right. Land yeah, final descent. Me. I don't know about that. Final descent. This is where we say other people have seen this, not just us. People not only have seen it, but they've also rated it and given us different reviews. So let's start with the IMDb score. I'm going to skip Blake because he's a cheater. Mm-hmm. He's a pumpkin eater. Uh, one out of ten decibel points in play. Matthew, what do you think people from around the world scored? Uh, let's join Joni. So I'm going to let my own bias kind of seep through here. Sure. And um, I'm going <laughs> to. Hey, 
Watch your bias, buddy. <laughs> I think some bias just came through. Sure some bile? About. Some bile? I'm going to give it a 7.2. I think that's going to be strong. Maybe way too high, but it's that's kind of high. It's a little high. Yeah, yeah, I would say a 5.2 yeah. for five sure. Something? There, he cheated. There it is, exactly. Is it's it really? 5.2. Okay, yep. Out of 10 ratings. It felt too high. Uh, critic reviews. This is someone we've t- I've heard from quite a bit. Vintage45 from WordPress.com says, Hard to believe it took four people to write this mess. <laughs> Joan Davis tries hard by doing a lot of physical comedy, but nothing works. It doesn't even approach funny. Uh, luckily for the talented Joan Davis, she got her sitcom, I Married Joan, two years later. Joe Flynn became a big TV star as Captain Birmington on McHale's Navy. So that's his two cents. Not impressed with the show at all. I can't say that I Did he leave any, leave any more of his uh, contact information? That you can find him at WordPress.com. If you need to contact him any further, I would uh, employ you to go there. <laughs> employ, implore. Em- I'll do employee. both. Employee. I employ you to go to WordPress.com. I'm going to make him one of my employees. Become employed by WordPress and then pl- implore to go. Uh, viewer reviews. Uh, let's see. Five out of five for historical value. They says this is a reviewer retro cyan. He says failed TV pilots from the 1950s are so rare that it's amazing to see one. So, but just based based on its availability, he gives it a perfect score. Uh, Robin 1990 gives it three out of five stars. Subject: Yes, I'm giving something. I uploaded a review. Uh, mostly, I review other people's stuff. However, sometimes I make an exception. This is one of those times. Uh, if you love failed pilots, this is worth a look. The difference between this and I Mary Joan is incredible in both writing and production values. So really not saying one way or the other, or whether she sure. likes it, just saying that there is a difference. Right. Um, I'll give a couple quick more here. Uh, this is by Jazz Fan, three out of five scars. He says, let's ban Joni. Yes, indeedy. Why would you? Oh, no, let's bang Joni. That's what it says. Good Lord. Gee, many Christmas. Had to go there. Wow, I'm not sure. Who wouldn't, right? Jazz fan, I would think, is uh, someone who's maybe more cultured, perhaps a lady, but then... Uh, no, he just... Oh, boy. Um, this, is, uh, this failed pilot was right after I slept with Joan and before I married Joan. So uh, that's someone else. A lot of here. comedy guys there. Well, it's, the internet's full of comedians, am I right, guys? <laughs> hey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt. The dog has not the made a noise in three days. I'm going I'm to kick that dog. I, when I go upstairs, I'm going to kick that dog. Don't, he was I, saving No, it. I'm absolutely going to do it. I hate that dog. I do too, but you can't kick it. Well, just I, I employ you to stop me. <laughs> Time will tell. One out of seven. That's the uh, that's the range. That's the scoring system we have set up. One being the worst, seven being the best. Taken from the television show accurately and affectionately, known as Wings from the nineteen ad nineties. All the characters from the show are in place. Number one, the worst score you can get. That's the character Roy Biggins. And number seven, that's the best you're going to get. That's Brian Hackett. Matthew, I turn to you. First of all, thank you so much. I enjoy it. For, I love being uh, here. For yep. being here and for reuniting, and it feels so good. Captain Philip Rassasher and myself, how do you rate Let's Join Joni? Well, you guys have both really come a long way in a very short amount of time. Thank relatively. you. Yeah. Two um, hours. That's okay. a short amount yeah, of time. I can't wait to see some shirtless pictures of Blake here in the near future. Do you want me to like uh, set up a separate Instagram and like sh- to like, con- yeah, like, like every day burnt- post to like show my progress? Just the progress and the change and we'll really watch those abs come through. <laughs> I want to see your abs come through. They will. <laughs> Abdominals. <laughs> Abdominal thrusts. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and man, I, I thought I thought IMDB was going to be kinder to it than than that, uh, even though it felt a little strong, I'm probably going to go with a solid five. I laughed a few times, and when it first popped up on the screen, I thought, this is going to be really rough. Just cause, like visually. Right. Like, how, how am I going to see through this? I don't know. There was a couple moments there where I found I, it caught me, caught me off guard that I was laughing along with it. And I think that was the intent of the show. Sure. Was to get a good laugh. So... There I am with a five. I think the problem is, is I opened up the windows in the back of the plane, <laughs> you know, to watch out for you guys on the tarmac. Sure. And I think that's what it is. So there's something C- going concerning on. Concerning the dogs barking. Right, right. 
I'm not joking. I'm going to I'm going to hurt one of those dogs. No, it's just a little one. That's fine. I'll hurt I'm going to hurt it. Uh Captain Philip rest assured I'm going to hurt those dogs. I turn to you. How do you rate Let's Join Joni? All right, here's the thing. I I took it as almost two separate pilots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said that earlier. You had almost two scores. Right. I I had two scores. Um you know, for the first half 7 of years the, ago. Four scores? <laughs> hey, don't shoot me. I'm just watching a TV show. <laughs> Uh, did you get that? Because Abraham Lincoln. John was... Wilkes. What? Yeah. John Wilkes boot. I didn't even know he was sick. Boot. <laughs> a boot. I'm gonna give John you... Wilkes. John, boot. You, you get the John Wilkes. I'm a, He's yeah. gonna give that dog the John Wilkes boot. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good garbage pail name. <laughs> John Wilkes boot. Uh, the first half of the show, I I enjoyed it. I liked the interaction with her and and, and Mr. Benson. So before it got to the health club part. Before it got yeah, okay. I, it, I, I thought it was good. It was cute. Um, but it fell off completely when she went to fat camp. Like to me, it it fell completely off. I couldn't. Part of it was because I couldn't see the bits very well. <laughs> you're, you trying to, you're trying to see her bits, right? And, you know, I'm not going to give it a good rating unless I can see them bits. Sure, sure, I hear you. And uh, a bit bump. <laughs> so the first half, if the first half of the show, I would have rated it a six. Right. The second half, I would have rated it a three. Okay. So I gave it a four. Kind of right in the middle there. Right, yeah. I hear it. So we got a five and a four. <sighs> I understand what you're saying. I think if it kept pace with the ori- the first half of it, um, it, and even the part that included the hat shop, I like these different... Yeah, no, yeah, that, I like that part too. The entire second half was dominated by this tiny little set and these, this really goofy physical comedy. Right. Like, really goofy. I'm going to give it a three. I hate the name Let's Join Joni, bad, I hate it. Bad name. I, well, they, the only know, they, thing I hate more than that debunked. are these goddamn dogs upstairs. <laughs> but th- th- it's the worst name ever. It does not roll off your tongue. No, it doesn't. It, it's tough to say. It, it's a tongue twister. What kind of show is that? No one wants to say a tongue twister. Nope. I give it a three. You give it a four. Metholomew gives it a five. And with that, we'll close the book on Let's Join Joni. And we will never speak of that show again. Yeah. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of So Here's What Happened. Here's a little something to whet your whistle. An ambitious guy takes over his family's car dealership in Queens, New York. You can find the entire episode of Here's What So Here's What's Happened uh, by subscribing to Couch Pilots in SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or go to YouTube. Matt. And you'll know what to do, too. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Good um, job, man. Good job. Yeah, that was a great job. Just, Always a pleasure to have you. Is there anything oh, you want to man, plug or I, anything? Yeah. Um, I plugged everything that I could. <laughs> <laughs> you plugged it real good. You, you, you plugged the levy, huh? I plugged the leak in this plane is what I would say. Okay. I was a part of that. Yeah. Um, nothing else really to plug. I, I, uh, I do Moonlight as a mediator. If anyone else uh, in the listening audience would like to uh, acquire my services. Sure. I thought you were talking Just, about remediation. Um, Are you licensed rem- for both? I'm licensed, yeah, because in remediation, <clears throat> we check the house externally for leaks, and um, the uh, the folks that live in it for Lyme disease and CMC and things like that. Mold. So CMC Music Factory? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got mold. We check to make sure that none of them are members of the CMC. <laughs> Music Factory. Oh, boy. But, that, but I, don't, I don't mean to talk about my... Uh, your work so much? Yeah, I don't mean to talk about work so much. <laughs> Always with that damn CNC music factory. You wouldn't believe how well that pays. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, if you like what you heard today, and I can't imagine that you would, uh, go to couchpilotspodcast.com. It's a website on the internet. We paid for it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, go to Spotify. If you have Spotify, subscribe to us on there. You can go back and listen to every episode. Yeah. Uh, whereas on iTunes, you can't hear all the episodes anymore. I don't anymore. know why that is. Uh, it's something about room, I think. Uh, but you can also go to couchpilotspodcast.com and hear all of the episodes as well. Uh, search it. Uh, go to our social medias. Go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash couchpilots. And um, all that stuff is available on the website. Yeah, it's, it's so, great. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a one-stop shop. It really is. There's stuff. even a phone number you can call. If uh, you want to call in and leave a message or sure. have a question, maybe, or a suggestion, 
or a mediation tool. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Or if you want to like give us a call with any of our fact checking for tonight. Sure, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, nine ten. We were really letting the facts fly sure. this evening. Yeah. Correct us. Yeah. Prove us wrong. We enjoy challenges. It. <laughs> nine ten pilots one. It's nine one zero seven four five six eight seven one. You can always hit back fifteen seconds if you didn't catch that, and I'll say it again. Uh, Blake mentioned Patreon. Blake off also often mentions something positive at the end of the show. Uh, friendship, right? Uh, you can have bumps in the road. Mm-hmm. You can have cracks in the asphalt. <laughs> You can have caucuses, right? You, have, you can definitely you can have, have caucuses. You big, you, fat, black caucuses. You can have private, you can privately have caucuses. Sure. And those, to me, those mm-hmm. are the safest. Yeah. Do a private caucus mm-hmm. if you have the chance. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend a public caucus yeah. of any kind. <laughs> and you're, you've are you been to school for this, so you know. Oh, absolutely. You're a, you're a, yeah. you're a caucus expert. I'm a, yeah. He minored in caucus. I'm an ancient of... What'd you pub- major in? I'm an ancient of public caucuses. <laughs> I wish we named these episodes. Uh, no, so uh, be kind to your friends, and they'll be kind to you. That's Ma- all I got. Yeah, thank you again, Matthew, for being here and, and, and mending these wounds and, and being uh, our, our one of our most special guests. I loved it. Thanks, guys. You bet. This pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next time. So right. See ya. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip.